Hello and welcome back to the Place to Be Reviews. I am Etep Wakuyan right here with all the yous. And don't adjust your monitors or your phone or anything. I, I, lost, uh, I lost some goatee. Um, forgotten Jedi Survivor may be the key to killing Palpatine in Star Wars Episode Nine. Well, the problem is Palpatine is already dead. Uh, he was killed in the end of Return of the Jedi. Now, regardless of what that hack J.J. Abrams, or as I like to call him, Jar Jar Abrams, would have you believe this is bullshit and this is a cheap remake of Return of the Jedi, just like he did with The Force Awakens being A New Hope, and uh, Sir Ruin Johnson of the House of Roundhead uh, tried to do with The Last Dumpster Fire and uh, somewhat emulate The Empire Strikes Back, which he failed, you failed miserably. There's a clear blueprint for defeating Palps once and for all. Uh, this is from Inverse.com. <clears throat> it's a trap. That's what Episode 9 is. And I hate uh, even using articles from this site, especially after the Corey Plant and uh, Doomcock thing. But this was too good to pass up. Uh, Emperor Palpatine's infamous Order 66 was supposed to wipe the Jedi off the face of the galaxy, but as we all know, it didn't exactly work as planned. Yoda survived, Obi-Wan survived, Luke and Leia survived, that kid in the new video game Jedi Fallen Order survived, but there's one Jedi survivor from the Star Wars Extended Universe who you've probably never heard of, but who could end up revealing how the Resistance will finally defeat Palpatine in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Now, as we remember in the end of The Last Jedi, there was like five people left in the fucking Resistance, so... I'm sure they built that up in the two days in between the movies. Meet Empatoy Gios Brand. Uh, Empanada Brand. This extended universe character may never appeared in any main... No, oh, this... This extended universe character never appeared in any of the Star Wars movies, but in supporting material, none of which is currently canonical, he played a key role in defeating Emperor Palpatine in the years after Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. Yeah, hit the road, Jack. This is ridiculous. Empanado was a Padawan of Master Yaddle, who was the only other... Um, species like Yoda we've ever seen in any of the films uh, like I said obviously they I, I believe I don't know too much about the EU uh, other than what I've kind of researched to you know just find out more for myself before I started making the YouTube videos uh, let's see one of let's see uh, okay so there's a link to an article inverse posted that other member of Yoda's race from the Star Wars prequels who was hunted by Darth Vader his ship was damaged and he survived after being rescued by a technologically primitive society that outfitted him with a bionic body to save his life. He's basically like Darth Vader. If Darth, he's basically like if Darth Vader was always a good guy, also janky as fuck. That's that's quality writing. Here's a panel. What little is left of me. Vader hunted me in my ship. It was destroyed. My ruined body encased in a pressure suit, I flowed into empty space until I was rescued by Ganathans. Later on, after Return of the Jedi, Empanada teams up with Luke Skywalker to take out Palpatine, who had found a way to survive his fall down the Death Star shaft by storing his consciousness in clones. That's the Dark Empire saga. Eventually, with some help from Han Solo, Empanada captured Palpatine's soul and brought it to the netherworld of the Force, where Palps could never escape, even though Jedi do it all the time. It's called being a Force ghost. Anyways, what does this? why does this matter? Well, there are a few reasons. The first is that Palpatine's ability to cheat death is the, in this non-canonical story sounds a lot like the leaks and rumors we've heard about how he'll return in Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. That's what led one Star Wars fan to wonder who could fill the role of Empanada in Episode 9. If that's what happens, then some other character, Kylo maybe, will have to take Palpatine's soul to another world. That would also mean Episode 9 could bring an un underexplored corner of the galaxy onto the big screen for the very first time. But here's another theory. 
what if the events described above or something very similar already happened in current Star Wars canon? What if Palpatine already cheated death and it took a team of good guys to take him out and lock his soul into the Star Wars version of hell? This could even be the big spoiler hiding in the first episode of The Mandalorian. God. Considering how each Star Wars movie in the sequel trilogy keeps introducing new forces, but Last Jedi didn't introduce shit, all right? Except more just garbage. That's it introduced pure garbage. That's what it introduced. Uh, is it possible that Episode Nine Palps could figure out how to become a Force Ghost too? Historically, that's been a Jedi-only ability, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. And if it does, it could be just the first step in Emperor's evil plan to resurrect himself entirely. Then again, maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's just deal with the Palpatine that somehow survived before we take on the one who brought himself back from death. And in that case, we'll need Empanada's brand or someone just as motivated to finish the job once and for all. So this is a EU character that's never going to be brought on to the big screen, obviously. Um... So I don't I don't know what they're trying to do here. This this article is just word salad. Um, this character is not going to be in the film. I don't see this happening at this point, unless they were like really really desperate with one of these reshoots, one of the six rumored uh, you know cuts of the movie, and they included an uh, empanada brand in this. Is it related to Elton Brand? He's played for the Clippers. I I don't know. Um, this this just sounds this whole thing with Palpatine. Um, them trotting him out for this movie, you know, after decanonizing the EU and, and now wanting it to, you know, cherry pick from it when it suits your fancy. It, it's just hilarious. It's comical and it's typical Jar Jar Abrams, you know, cop out filmmaking where he can't come up with, a, he just, he can't close. He can start things, but it's that whole mystery box. You know, not everything needs to be a riddle wrapped in an enigma, you know, surrounded by, uh, a question it's just it's ridiculous man um i don't think this movie's going to be any good i think there's going to be so much shoehorn into the three hour runtime that it's going to be as disjointed it, which will be uh representative of the entire trilogy so i mean it's not it's not a big uh surprise i mean will it make money absolutely the 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 brand loyalists you know who aren't product specific shoppers per se uh, of you know a good product or they're just loyal to a logo in this case it's a star wars logo don't don't get it twisted like i said i love star wars but i'm not gonna you know this this, this stuff over here you know this is this is good stuff you know i mean the, the originals the prequels you know up to rogue one like i said it is good you know the clone wars cartoon both of them are good rebels i don't care about uh, and, and big to freddie prince jr you're a, you're a douchebag, um, but it, it's just they, it's insulting. This is insulting on every level. Is a, a true uh, Star Wars fan? Like, oh, you're not a Star Wars fan if you don't just in love every movie. Uh, well, I don't have to. Solo was boring. I've never been bored watching a Star Wars film before. After uh, Re Last Jedi, I, I discovered what it was to be angry while watching a Star Wars movie, within 10 minutes of that movie starting, I was like, this is bullshit. What is this, Spaceballs? No, that's right. Spaceballs was actually like higher quality than <laughs> The Last Jedi and Spaceballs came out in the 80s. So, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. Um, will I see this movie? Not in the theaters. Um, unless, like I said, somebody buys me a ticket. But then again, I don't want to sit through three hours of just being pissed off because I'm watching a franchise that I got to see the tail end of in the theater. Like I said, I got to see uh, um, Return of the Jedi in a theater, which was absolutely awesome getting to you know, experience that. Um, and then obviously the prequels because I was in my 20s when those came out. So, But yeah, this this is not, like I said, I, I got somebody bought me a ticket to go see Last Jedi. I hadn't seen Force Awakens yet. Uh, I hadn't seen Rogue One. I was kind of just done after Disney bought him. I was like, I, I don't, I didn't have any enthusiasm. I saw the previews, um, but so I watched Last Jedi in the theater, and I was angry immediately, uh, angry after watching it. I just, I was like, this doesn't even make sense. So uh, I went back and I watched, even as a standalone Star Wars film, it's horrible. 
uh, it's not a Star Wars film. I went back and watched The Force Awakens, and I'm like, well, this actually... So then, you know, my wife, God bless her, um, bought The Last Jedi on Blu-ray and Force Awakens for me. They are sitting in my garage waiting to go out to the target range to use with my AR right now. Um, but, no, I, uh, I... So I watched... And then I, I got Rogue One, which I, I really, I was like, I heard good things about that. So I, I bought that one, and I, I enjoy that. Uh, but, yeah, I watched The Force Awakens, and I'm like, this doesn't even make, oh, oh well, some of it, okay, well. All right, I didn't like how they turned Han Solo into a deadbeat fucking dad, and they killed him off, which was absolutely ridiculous. Kylo Ren is just a bad character. Ray is, Ray showed a little bit of promise in that movie, but at the same time, she was so OP, it's pathetic. Um... You know, Finn, um, I was like, okay, you got this guy set up to be a very compelling character. Uh, and then Last Jedi rolls around and flips the entire thing on its head and turns Finn into a moron. And, you know, the human potato sack Rose Tico. Uh, you know, Ray's even more OP. Leia's Mary fucking Poppins. You know, you got a literal purple haired third wave intersectional feminist in uh, General Holdo who just emasculates who, what could have been your new Han Solo. In uh, Poe Dameron, who portrayed by Oscar Isaac, is a great actor. I mean, he's really he's a great, talented actor. So, no, th this trilogy is a mess. Uh, Rogue One was great. Like I said, I watched that and I was like, wow, this is this has rewatchability. Um, it, it was cool. It was you know a war movie that happened to be a Star Wars film. So it was really cool. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I'll still watch that to this day. Uh, I watched Solo with my wife and my kid. My kid had no interest in it literally. Uh, at one point, because he's watched the original trilogy and at four years old, and the prequels so many times, you know, obviously Han is not in the prequels, but from the original trilogy, we, we've watched that ad nauseum, um, especially Empire Strikes Back, which is my one of my fa not only Star Wars favorite film, but one of my favorite films overall. Uh, he just looked, and I was telling him, this is Solo, that's Han. That's not Han Solo, Dad. Straight from the mouths of babes, a four year old, literally. Um, and. This is a kid who was uh, wanted to be Darth Maul for Halloween. I mean, you know, so it, it's he, he's four years old. Trust me, I, I've I've got him into Star Wars from the time he was born. He, you know, he knows this shit, so th th that's cool. Um, but yeah, just the recognition. But no, I don't uh, I don't have any faith left in that they can do anything to redeem any of these characters. Uh, and you can throw all the member berries at me you want with this. You're not going to win me over unless this movie... But if this movie's great, you know, I'll I'll admit it. I'll eat crow. I'll admit it. But I, I don't think I'm in any jeopardy of having to do that. So, there's that. <laughs> With that being said, I'm Etep Okuyan. This is the place to be reviews. Now, tonight, 8.35 Eastern Standard Time. Debuting a new show tonight. The Boardroom, Episode 1. Right here with myself... Rubinator from Raiders of the Lost Flicks, The Don of Two Cents Toys, Salvador, and Cody from Goober Brothers Entertainment will be joining me for our new weekly show, The Boardroom. We'll be rotating from my channel to Goober Brothers Entertainment to Raiders of the Lost Flicks and back again. A different channel every week, that's right. Right here, starting tonight at 8.35 on the Place to Be Reviews. And don't you forget... Bitch slap that like button on the way out. Please consider subscribing. Help us grow the channel. Provide you with more content. Live streams, reviews, things of that nature. Also, go over. we got a Facebook page. The place to be reviews. Give that a like. We post links to the videos, memes, videos, all that. Oh, you know, uh, other videos, all that stuff up there. We also have a Facebook group. It is private, but you can kind of just come on in and throw a join request. It is the official place to be reviews fan page. Check that out. If you want to get a hold of us, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter at the Place to Be Reviews. Also, if you're old school, you can email us the Place to Be Reviews at mail.com. I'm Etep Kulian signing out and reminding you, if I don't see you, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow.